Hey, this is the last part of a series. If you haven't seen the first two parts yet, there should be a link in the top right corner to a playlist. We're going to be talking about the third book in the trilogy, The Fourth Closet. <laughs> so, chapter one, uh, John is an absolute wreck, and there is an imposta charge. And the only reason we know that is because John is like, you don't feel like Charlie. She wouldn't be so nice or hot, which is kind of weird. Um, chapter two. Um, I have a question. What's up? What kind of pasta? Um, I don't know. Lasagna. Chapter 2. Uh, definitely not impasta Charlie uh, harasses local garbage man. Uh, she's collecting parts of, of some kind. It might be the original animatronics, which is kind of terrible that they're in the junkyard now. But whatever. It not matter. Okay. Uh, impasta Charlie says that she misses John... John doesn't see her eyes. I don't fully know what that means, but he can't see them. Are they silver? No. Imposta Charlie has Charlie's memories. Uh, John is acting the fool. Uh, what does that mean? She died, so only she should be hurting. I still don't like this Charlie. I don't like any version of Charlie, but Charlie gets a little bit better in this one. Actual Charlie. If we can call it that. Um... But she does remember what Charlie remembers, so she's, she's, I'm not even going to say that it is Charlie, because that's, that was dumb to me, because I was, like, it's very clearly not, otherwise why would that be a plot point? But I was like, that's okay. Uh, chapter three. Uh, some guy and a robot ejecting souls. What? Also, Funtime Freddy is confirmed. What do you mean some guy in a robot is ejecting souls? <laughs> what are they doing? I know who it is. Uh, the souls are the children, and the guy is uh, William. Yeah. He's ejecting them? No, they're ejecting themselves. What they are right now is they're a heap of metal, uh -huh. and their souls are like trying to get out. Okay. Yeah. What? <laughs> Good question. All right. Uh, this is basically Where's Charlie the book, because John, the other friends are like, no, it has to be Charlie, she looks like Charlie, and John is like, dead convinced that it's not, and he's right. It has to be her, she looks like her. <laughs> she looks a lot like her, it has to be her. Do they look in the mirror and go, oh my god, another me! <laughs> Probably. They're like, they're easily tricked. Like um, a dog. Circus Baby's Pizza is confirmed in this universe. That is the sister location. The sister location. Chapter 4. So Jessica feels ill at ease because Imposta Charlie broke into her apartment. Because she's made a lasagna. You said Imposta? She broke into her apartment because she's made of lasagna? No, this is why she feels at ease. Uh, uh, not at ill, ease. At, ill at ease because she's lasagna. Mm. They have a, a date, uh, John and Imposta Charlie. I thought you were saying... Jessica and Imposta Charlie. After Imposta Charlie broke into her house. <laughs> that would be an interesting <laughs> twist. That's not how you make the first move. I'd be like, move. Yeah, you, remember, you remember when we started dating and I just broke into your house? I do. It was really weird. <laughs> I said yes. Um, Why? But I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is so sad. Like, John is convinced that this is obviously not Charlie and it probably isn't. But she has her memories, and then I was like, D -d -d wait, like, what did they see in each other? Because I don't remember romance ever really being a very prevalent part of their relationship. <laughs> I was like, I don't, wait. Uh, okay, so obviously new Charlie is sus. Uh, there are two missing children at this point in the book. They're really unimportant. <laughs> Literally two dead, probably dead children. That's just, like, to be expected at this point. Um, sure. Oh, Theodore, the, you know, the rabbit head? Yeah. He starts spitting absolute bars. Uh, he says, Shining Star, Silver Reef. Oh, by the way, Clay is hurt. Carlton's father. That's unimportant, too. 
But Theodore cool. Theodore says cryptic messages, and the reason we still have Theodore is John is sentimental about Charlie, so he kept her stuffed rabbit's head. You know? Cool. She, it's a robot. It's not stuffed. That's worse. <laughs> Chapter 5. Uh, Theodore leads them to Aunt Jen's. Uh, oop. Falso Charlie just killed Aunt Jen. Oh. I would feel fun. bad, but we've literally seen her twice before. Yeah. Uh, cut to, uh, Charlie's in a box. Yay. Run away with her. So there we go. Why is she in a box? Uh, John found her in a chest in Aunt Jen's house. It's literally just her curled up in a ball, and then, like, there's a blanket on her or something. <laughs> cool. Chapter 6. Uh, Ella the doll, the teacup doll. Do you remember her from the first book? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so Ella and the illusion and an illusion disc is taken, and Charlie is in fact a robot. Oh my Charlie god! Charlie is actually a baby. Technically, like okay, no, 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 not Charlie herself. Ella is Charlie. That's like baby Charlie. What? She wears an illusion disc to look more like Charlie. Not a, not a fan. <laughs> You're making a really, like... <laughs> it's the stinkiest face I've ever seen. Ella? Yeah. Is the teacup thing. Mm hmm Who is not the Charlie we followed for the last two books. No. That Charlie was the one in the box? The Charlie we followed was the one in the box. How did she end up in the box? Anton. We watched her die. And Jen took her out, and then brought her back, repaired her, whatever you do with robots, and then put her in a chest. Because she was a robot the whole time. Yes, she was a robot the whole time. So why the fuck does the one... So the imposter is the fucking teacup. No. <laughs> what the fuck is the teacup, then? Just baby Charlie. I don't think it has any emotions. I'm pretty sure teacup, like, Ella Charlie, is basically just, like, for looks. This is, this is still somehow not the weirdest and most confusing that this, these books get. I mean, okay, this series, yes, but like the FNAF books as a whole. Yes. Chapter 7. Um, Imposta Charlie hunts in an apartment for Charlie. Real Charlie. Uh, meanwhile, real Charlie is in and out of consciousness because, you know, she just recently died. Uh, I'm going to start calling Imposta Charlie just Imposta. Uh, Imposta knows that they know, so she snatches Jessica. Chapter 8. Uh, so Imposta this whole time has actually been Baby, the animatronic. Baby is adult Charlie. Uh, but it was, Baby was used by Afton, uh, to possess his daughter, like, so that his daughter Elizabeth could possess her. For some reason. What? So not really Charlie. What? Baby was originally built to be Charlie. Adult okay. adult Charlie. Okay. Whatever. William Afton took that animatronic. I think his daughter died by that animatronic and possesses that animatronic. And William Afton changed her to be Baby. Because he opened up a different location. The sister location. Circus Baby's Pizza. And she's the star of that. Okay. Motive unknown. I don't. I don't think William liked his daughter, so that that's part of it. Sure. He thought she was lame. Uh, Springtrap has a musical number, but he is not William Afton. <laughs> it's a. It's like a fake version of Springtrap. Again. Sure. But also, he has a musical number. In a book. In a book. He does a little dance, and he sings a little bit. He's like... Uh, after the Springtrap musical number, uh, real William Afton is here. He's an old man, and he flashes us. So that's great. He what? Not actually. He takes off a robe and changes into something else, or something like that. What? He's mostly metal at this point. So. So did he actually get Springtrapped? Yeah. He got out. And now he's mostly metal. 
So now the children, the spirits, are melted metal. And then there's a surgery scene. What's happening, I believe, is Baby is helping her father, technically, uh, by giving him surgery, and she's replacing his body with parts from the children's, like, molten metal. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay. So he's becoming more of a robot because he wants their eternal life because that's part of the, like, molten metal stuff. It has their, like... I'm not going to explain Remnant, but Remnant's a thing. Um, basically, it's their, like, life force slash their anger. Whatever. Cool. I am what is left of a broken man. Chapter 9. Charlie is being doctored because she keeps passing the fuck out. Um, Ella is basically baby Charlie, I told you that. Uh, and John is finally kind of mean to Charlie, and I was so happy about it. But then he feels bad about it because she's been dead. And I was like, don't feel bad about it. She was terrible. She literally got over dying. I think you can, I think she can handle it. But I think the reason is because now that she's been dead, she's like confused and doesn't know what's going on. So she's kind of like, you know, she's reverted. To which I was like, I don't care. <laughs> she deserves this. Uh, John's back to being a simp. And they go to Aunt Jen's paperwork because they're trying to figure out what's happening. Chapter 10. Jessica is still alive. Uh, and she found the missing children. So they're not dead. Good. Chapter 11. We slowly learn that Charlie is a robot. It was a slow burn. Charlie and John uh, finally meet in pasta. Uh, chapter 12. Funtime Freddy maze fun. They run from Funtime Freddy in a maze. I fucking called it in the first book that Freddy Fazbear was the Minotaur in the maze. I can't believe my joke, like, about the fucking labyrinth of the mall was actually right. Chapter 13. They save almost all the children, uh, besides the ones who are already dead. No. Uh, fun Just time, be a robot, Kate. There's, not that it's there's a character that's, at first, Funtime Foxy, it says, and then it turns into, like, Mangle. So I don't know, I'm assuming it's Funtime Foxy, they just had a moment where they were like, what if it was also Mangle? Funtime Freddy gets destroyed. Chapter 14, Elizabeth shares everyone's trauma. Thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is imposter, in case you forgot. Um, she, she shares everyone's trauma, including hers, Charlie's, Henry's. Also, William Afton is abusive. Wow. Didn't I know never that. would have guessed that the child murderer would be a bad parent. That's crazy. Oh my god. First actual, like, kind of confirmed retcon, the silver eyes weren't Foxy at all. They were actually Elizabeth. What Charlie saw was actually Elizabeth being built. She, it was her silver eyes. Secretly, by the way, the reason that Charlie is, like... <sighs> Charlie's soul is technically in her because Charlie's soul is in a doll called Ella, not the teacup doll, but a different doll, like a cloth doll. Okay. And the reason that Charlie is, like, kind of alive and has, like, those memories is because that doll is, like, in her as a robot. Okay. Wait, does that make her a mech? Kind of. Anyway, Carlton got stabbed with ghosts. Also, there's a child there. Stabbed with ghosts? Yeah. Meaning the ghosts... You remember how they were molten metal? He got stabbed with Okay. Them. Yes. He got stabbed with the ghost. Does that do anything special compared to a regular knife? Or is it just... Yes. He gets sent to the spirit realm and talks to the ghost children. <laughs> just, and then you like trip and like, ah, oh, shit, I cut myself with the metal. Where the fuck am I? By the way, the time this happens, Carlton is trying to protect a child, so what ends up happening is the child is just standing there like, oh shit, while Carlton, Carlton like passes out and goes to the spirit realm. <laughs> He'd be like dead, right? Like if the kid came over to check his pulse, it'd just be like nothing. Yeah, probably. Chapter 15. Rome made an instant kill knife. So the reason that Charlie, okay. Charlie is the result of Henry having a special ability of some kind that William Afton wants to replicate but could never replicate. Uh, Henry basically, with his intense emotions, created life for his animatronics. 
And no, 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 hang on, hang on. Walk through me with this, okay? I can't walk through you. You're too solid. (laughs) Charlie, our Charlie, is the result of Henry questioning his big sad because he had depression. Isn't that fun? Okay, Carlton is with the ghost children, and they do not know they are dead at present. They think William Afton is their friend, because he's currently torturing them to think that. I don't know how that works. Don't ask me. We spent the last I'm two, not a mad scientist. We spent the last two books of yes. them being like, yes. William Afton, murder it is. William Afton, more like, get him. <laughs> but William's like, no, 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 we're, good. we're cool, guys, we're cool. And they're just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, and then after that, uh, Charlie stabs every Charlie, and John is sad. So Charlie stabs every Charlie, uh, meaning she... (sighs) Okay, so she stabbed through baby into herself, and they're both stabbed. They are both dead, technically. And John is sad, because his robot girlfriend died. She wasn't even that nice to you, dude, like... Carlton convinces the ghost children that the yellow rabbit man is a bad man. And he does that by collecting their memories for them. It's kind of cool. I was like, oh. Uh, so Carlton uh, gets saved by the spirits. The spirits save the boy. And then uh, after the spirits are all mad at William, uh, they then move on. So Carlton, chapter 16. Carlton is fine. Uh, Good for him. I'm glad he got back from the spirit world somehow. John visits Henry and Charlie's graves, and uh, a woman, allegedly Charlie, joins him and they walk away together. Yeah, she comes back. I don't know if it's another version or if she's just like, oh, I'm back, I crawled out. We have a few last things that I should mention. Okay. Because I looked into it, because apparently there's a few differences between the books and the graphic novels. I don't have the graphic novel, so I can't fully confirm these. But these are also things that I, like, researched. Mm. Uh, so, the end, uh, where it may or may not be Charlie, it remains ambiguous, but in the graphic novels it looks a little bit more like it is Charlie. Well, I guess, you know, I have to show it, so that makes sense. Right. Also, this is unimportant, but I was like, Jessica is my favorite character. So Jessica has brown hair in these books, but it was changed to blonde because Charlie has brown hair and that's her thing. <laughs> they can't both have brown hair. Thanks, comics. Um, also, um, the animatronic amalgam, like the melted metal with all the kids in it, yeah. it looks really, like, I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, next thing, uh, this is more of a side note, so... I told you that book description where it says, like, Charlie is, like, almost always smiling. Yeah. Where? In the graphic novel. She always looks depressed. I'm like, I don't see it. (laughs) I don't see it. She looks very sad. The character book that they released, it's kind of weird because... I don't remember how long ago they released this. But it was just a book full of the characters and, like, they basically explain them. They kind of combine... Like, this Charlie and the game Charlie, which they are not the same character. Because, I mean, in the books, she's like, she's a robot. In the game, she is the spirit of the child who died. So, and the counter is the same person. I'm like, I guess? Not really, though. So, editing hope here. I cannot believe I forgot to mention this, because it's amazing. But the way her memories were recorded, Charlie's memories, that is, is her dad Henry set up a tripod (laughs) and then basically put whatever that tripod recorded into whatever gave her memories so all of her memories if she looks down in those memories (laughs) she's just a tripod she just sees three legs so that's what I was laughing about in the first video I just thought I should clarify because I don't know why I didn't mention that (laughs) that's amazing all right see you guys talking about the games now. Games up to what point? Until the Ruin DLC for Security Breach. How much of that do you know? (laughs) Yeah, that's about it. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So FNAF 1, right? 
Uh, you got your basic, there's missing children. Um, Wild. There's five of them. I think there's, there's like, newspaper articles hidden throughout the game. Um, How do you find the newspaper articles? Sometimes they just kind of appear, I'm pretty sure. Cool. Like, they'll be in places of posters or something. Uh, just, like, at random? like. Yeah, kind of. I've never played the games, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I really should play the games. I would like to, but I'm also kind of a coward. So. I think the VR one would be the worst one person. The VR one looks terrifying. So, a lot of FNAF 1 insinuates that, obviously, the missing children were murdered, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really focus on it. The main focus is more the fact that the animatronics may or may not be haunted. Also, we get Phone Guy! I love Phone Guy. Doesn't he die in this game? Or yes, he, he does. <laughs> Almost immediately. I think on Night 5. Either Night 5 or Night 4. He dies. Who, is he it, dies. Is it mentioned who kills him? Because mm. you get the audio of him dying. Yeah. Obviously. I'm not too sure. I think a lot of people assumed... I think it was Golden Freddy. I would have to go back and, like, re-look into it, but... Where would Golden Freddy kill Phone Guy? I don't know, but at the end, I'm pretty sure it's his scream, because it's a very, like, ah, uh, you know? Ah. <laughs> uh. It sounds very much like it. If it's not, I don't know who that man is. What the fuck, what the fuck did Phone Guy do? He's just chilling. Who's to say? Uh, FNAF 2. Same as quirky little covers. So for FNAF 2, a lot of people, I don't know if this is still a widely held belief because everything keeps changing and I can't keep up with it, but a lot of people uh, think it's a prequel to the original, which I don't know, probably. Um, it adds the toy animatronics, mm. uh, the withered original animatronics that we see in FNAF 1, um, the puppet, who is very important to the story until I would say Ultimate Custom Night and then is kind of like sidelined, which is sad because I really like the puppet. And Bloom Boy. Cool. He's in there too. Um, Glad he's here. So there's high tech animatronics now. And by which I mean they look at you and your faces in a military database. So, didn't know they could do that. Um, cool. There's potentially That's more... That's not scary at all. There's potentially more dead kids. I think there's like five more dead kids, but I don't know that for sure. And you would think that would be something that I would know for sure. Because that's kind of a big deal. I think FNAF 2 was the first game to use, like... They were kind of like cutscenes. Um, also the first to use, like, kind of mini-games. So we got some pretty interesting mini games. I believe we got um, like the part of the <laughs> there was save them, which is basically uh, the purple guy. I I don't remember what he did, but the purple guy was in it. There was give gifts and give life, which was a puppet mini game, because the puppet was giving the children gifts to give them life. And then you get a golden Freddy jump scare, so that's fun. You get to give cake to the children. You get to see. You get to see a kid die, and it's not confirmed until later that it's Charlie. So there is that. Foxy, go go go! Uh, you see the purple guy kill children. His favorite hobby. FNAF three. There's only spring trap, but there are hallucinations, and we get phone dude, who in my opinion is not as good as phone guy. I like phone guy better. Um. So, the, this particular um, location is a horror attraction, and it burns at the end, uh, seemingly with Springtrap escaping. Um, and then there's all kinds of mini-games in this one, too. So what I'm, getting is, what I'm getting is the mini-games are those, like, pixel things that people use for, like, art a lot? Yeah. And then those are where you get all your lore from? Yes. Okay. I believe they influence the ending of FNAF 3. Again, at some point, really should play it. FNAF 4? <laughs> it's the most retconned. So it's probably the most... It was the most confusing to, like, look into. The main character is debated on, because okay. we're pretty sure it's the crime child. Okay. But we're not 
I don't think we're positive. We might be like, positive. I don't know. I feel like at one point you told me that I got retconned to be Michael. It did at one point. I don't know if that's still a thing. Okay. Um, I don't... Retcon implies that Scott said something. He usually doesn't. It's usually the fans being like, wait, is it? And then we're just kind of like, a lot of FNAF is based off of conjecture and then accepting that conjecture. And the second anybody says anything who, like, is slightly in charge, that whole tower gets knocked down. Cool. So, yeah. I thought Xenoblade was bad. But I, but what I do know about FNAF 4 is that the Nightmare animatronics come into play. Uh, there's Nightmare, which is basically the Nightmare version of Golden Freddy, but this time he looks like a shadow. And he's spooky. Um, cool. And there's Plush Trap, who's just really small spring trap, and also he's a plushie. Um, there's a Halloween update, so therefore there are non-canon Nightmare animatronics. Cool. Um, there's a hospital theme in FNAF 4, because a lot of hospital elements will show up occasionally, making people think it's in a hospital room. Uh, links with the Bite of 83 minigame, and then there's the um, unopenable box that we all know. Then we have FNAF Sister Location. By the way, there will be some games I don't mention because I don't think they have any lore implications. Like, there's a whole fighting game, and there's a lot of, like, offshoots of games that I'm just like... We've got Sister Location, you got the Fun Times, you've got Baby, you got Ballora. I don't know if they qualify as Fun Times, but they're in there. Uh, I think it's widely accepted that Michael's the main character in that one. Eggs Benedict. Um, that's pretty cool. What? And then, what? the what? fuck is Eggs Benedict? That's what the system calls him in the game. Because uh. the thing is messed up. But I'm pretty sure it's definitively Michael, because he does turn purple at the end. So I don't think that's arguable, but it might be. So our goal in Sister Location, I, I'm pretty sure is to find Elizabeth, which is unfortunate, because she is currently dead and inside of Baby. Um... The Fun Times Escape via Becoming Entered. Um, oh, if we're being fair, you did find Elizabeth. True, you did technically find Elizabeth. Uh, because okay. of Entered, we're pretty sure Baby was never actually Baby. But honestly, who cares? Uh, Baby is very manipulative. Uh, in that game, I don't think in any other game is she that manipulative. Uh, she's just kind of bloodthirsty. Happens. Uh, Michael becomes a skin suit. There's blueprints uh, in the game that you have to find that are basically like detailed the fun time animatronics and how they like have voice mimicry, illusion discs. They have child containment uh, units. So what I'm hearing is there's actually a precedent for the. Uh, kind of. Uh, God damn it. And there's also a secret camera room uh, that looks into FNAF 4's, FNAF 4's bedroom. I'm not even going to get into that. I don't even want to. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, I know there's a lot of hearsay that it's like, it's because William's looking in on whoever the FNAF 4 person was. And I'm like, oof. <laughs> um, FNAF World. A lot of people don't like FNAF World. But yeah. there is some lore in there. I don't remember much of the lore, but I do remember that in one of the updates... Um, Henry sees Baby, and then Henry kills himself, which is a common theme for Henry for reasons I don't know. Poor Henry. <laughs> Does um, he do it with the same way? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Remember when you said gun? Ah. Um, yeah. But then he comes, I don't know if, I don't understand. Pizza Ray Simulator, he, uh, he, he's there. He's like, he got his whole speech. Uh, Pizzeria Simulator, a lot of people think that you are Michael. That might be true. I, th I think so, because at the end, Henry's like, you want to stay here, and that's, you know, probably Michael, because his whole family's in there at that point. But basically, uh, you own a pizzeria, uh, you're kinda, not really in cahoots with Henry. At the end, you are, but only because he explains his plan. He does not explain his plan to you prior to that. Um, you're just there because you're like, my dad and my sister are there, most likely. Um, 
you, but you're gonna release uh, Charlie, Elizabeth, and all the dead kids, uh, and try to send William to hell, because he's there too. Which game is this again? This is uh, Pizzeria Simulator. Okay. Uh, you get fun mini games like Fruity Maze, where you learn how Susie died, the one who possesses Chica, mm. and Midnight Motorist. There's a character named Helpy. He has a whole vibe. I love him. He's like a mini fun time Freddy. Supposedly, he sort of comes back. In... He's so cute. Supposedly, he's sort of back in Ruin. I love him. But there's also a thing going on where like he's sometimes real and sometimes the mimic lying to you. That's quirky. Um, I guess you can tell by the eyes. Like, the blue one's the real one, the yellow one's the mimic. That makes sense. I think. You can also tell on how they talk, because the blue one talks very objectively and the yellow one's, like, manipulative with it. I don't know. You should go to the basement. No one's in there right now. <laughs> um, Ultimate Custom Night. Uh, Ultimate Custom Night is very simple. William is in hell. Uh, and there's some pretty nice voice lines, uh, and some of those voice lines indicate lore, because Cassidy is torturing William. Because she's the one you should not have killed, even though there was a lot of people he probably shouldn't have killed. I don't know why Cassidy was special. Clearly. Also, Cassidy, I'm pretty sure, is an assumed name. I'm just going to call her Cassidy, because I'm, it's the only way I know. I also don't know if it's a boy or a girl. It's high noon. I know nothing. All I know is you go, Cassidy. You torture your killer. Uh, help it's wanted. It's past your bedtime. So game, basically the games in VR, except two important changes. Uh, there's parts and service mini games, which are pretty cool. And also, uh, Glitch Trap exists now. And Great. Vanessa gets into the story, and we're kind of into the Vanny story, but it doesn't really progress in Help Wanted. We're just kind of like, we see some things, and we're like, that's interesting. Who's that? We've got our um, we've got the AR game, uh, special delivery. Uh, not much happens other than we get more Vanny lore, and you get some funky in real life animatronics with some quirky skins. That's fun. Those are what all those uh, those toys you can see at you Walmart. You get a lot of toys at Walmart for the the skins from special delivery. Uh, security breach. We got the glam rocks, the security bots, Vanny, Sun and Moon. Uh, we get. <laughs> Old man Willie. <laughs> it's just him, but he's dying and decrepit. Uh, I think. What do they call him? Is it Burn Trap? Probably. I think. I don't they call him Burn like... Trap in that one, but a lot of people are just like, haha, <laughs> William Afton in wheelchair, which is kind of correct. Uh, we get the Blob and we get Gregory. We get Glitch Trap uh, and Vanny being assholes, obviously. Uh, they take over all the animatronics except Freddy. You have to smash the animatronics, get out, beat up that old man, and then leave questioning uh, missed opportunities and crazy lore. Uh, which is a little bit better with Ruin, but not much, because I'm still just as confused. I like Music Man, he's in there too. Yeah. And also the Tiny Music Man. They're kind of mm -hmm. cute, but I'm also scared of spiders, so I was kind of like... The Music Man, um, he's like fine in... Security breach, and then in ruin, he has like a jump scare. I think he has a jump scare in security breach. Does he? I think if he catches you. Yeah. I know the mini one has one because it starts following. Because there's Cassie. a segment where a music man chases after you in uh, security breach. Yeah. I know in ruin, a mini one follows you through a vent. All right. So other than that, we just got uh, the movie and the ruin DLC. I don't know that much about the ruin DLC. I'm excited for the movie. This, um, these notes were written before the DLC was released, and it, it took us that long. They were, and it took forever. Uh, well, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, like it, let me know. Uh, we have a lot more FNAF books we could get through, or we could play some FNAF games, or we could switch to a different series. I could do Xenoblade. I legit three days ago talked about Xenoblade for four hours. We could do that. Like to let me know you like this kind of stuff, I guess, and subscribe for more. I've been Ketchup Shark. This is Hope. Uh, bye.